I mean, it wasn't the present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He didn't wear the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. He made it specially for me. The mirror. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. I haven't looked at it since. Silver leaf? No. And he normally silvers them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. On his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. I mean, he made the mirror and he gave it to me. On the street. It was busy, so I parked down the end of the road. I walked up to the house, I knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag, unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. I could tell because the key wouldn't turn when I tried to turn it to the left. I walked in, Simon's coat wasn't on the peg, I couldn't see his shoes on the shoe rack. Um, I shouted out for him. I walked straight into the kitchen, he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. He wasn't there. I touched the kettle, it was cold. Um, I looked quickly into the living room, nothing. I walked upstairs to the bedroom, he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. And then I had a shower. Whilst I was in the shower, the phone rang. I think it was Eric, his boss. I didn't answer it. Then I came out and I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, but I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. I spoke to him. Then I called Simon's parents. And then I decided to come and see you. That enough? In the bedroom. That can't be right. In the bedroom. Yes, this is it. He made it himself. It's a special one-off. He made it and decorated it. That's his thing. Where do you find it? This is a nice of them. This is where you take people when it's time to arrest them. Like I said, 
I think I was popping out to get something, ran out of something, had to grab something. I sometimes drive too fast. If you want, you can arrest me for that. Thanks, just one sugar. Maybe a fresh cup of tea? the rock. You've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch. That was my touch, to make sure the alibi stuck. was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen, you can probably check that. We never go into the cellar, it's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up, I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. Well, fine, considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. And worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in. As good as new, he said. But they had to throw some stuff out. Could have get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So.
Yes, it was a cremation for the best. We both wore black and had veils, so it was easy. And after the funeral, everyone came back to the house. Hannah served up sandwiches, and I stayed out of sight. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. before it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. instead. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one. One girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place.
All that matters really, the baby. <laughs> Simon's dead, but the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. Rehearsed? You ask me the same question, you'll get the same answer. Is that your evidence? Of course I thought about what happened then. It's all I've thought about. My husband is dead. Yes, I always pull it shut and then lock the bigger lock with the key. Um, no, no, I don't think it was. I turned the key but it was already unlocked. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone signed me from the rock. Let me see. Yes. I drove in here because I remember well I went over the river. And then there was a church. There. Yeah. And I probably part well I remember seeing a street sign called Princess Street. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it must be this one. There. Yes. I thought about telling Hannah. 
I felt guilty after the kiss. But then it began to feel like this was the way it should be. Sharing, like we had before. He never mentioned her to me. There was the Simon with me and the Simon with her. It was almost like it was a different Simon. But. When beautiful people died, we always felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace, Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. We used a Ouija board to speak to her and that gave us the power to find him. That's what we thought then. That people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous, didn't want to share. Even the first date, we went to see Tom Cruise at the Old Odeon. We both went, kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean... That's when she got pregnant, from that one time. It lasted about six months. I tried to carry on, but everything was different. Hannah insisted I not pretend to be her around Simon, let alone sleep with him. We didn't share him like the others. The rules had changed. Me living in the attic had become weird in a way it hadn't been before. No, um, I was 15, Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. It was stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad. But those early experiences, they help you realise who's really important to you, you know? Family. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. No, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. He was a local boy in a band. He was a bit of a shit. But he was sexy. <laughs> we were 15. Family. So, Carl fucked off. And then there were other boys here and there. And then, Simon. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. 
I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Thank <laughs> you.